Welcome to the Bison Information Network. I'm Z Stockwell. And I'm Corey Hartle. We have a lot to cover tonight, so don't go away. With the spring semester about to come to an end, with finals finishing up tomorrow, there's only one day left in the semester and the books you've studied all year are no longer needed. This being said, the NDSU bookstore is still buying back used books. Any books, even those not purchased from NDSU, can be sold to the bookstore for cash on the spot. The book buyback will run until tomorrow, Friday, May 12th at 5 p.m. Until May 15th, you can donate your unwanted items easily by taking them to the donation trucks spread around campus. Trucks are located between um, Severinsen and Thompson, in front of RJ Hall, and by Cater. Everything from clothes to houseware and sporting goods are accepted. Non-perishable, unopened food is also welcome to be donated in the lobbies of each hall. If you're currently in an NDSU apartment and plan to continue living there over the summer, then you're required to renew your contract by May 31st. Students who apply by the deadline will be entered into a drawing for a chance to win one of five $500 scholarships. Failure to renew your licensing agreement does not excuse you from having to submit your 60-day vacating notice, and a hold will be placed on your account. Rates have also been increased at NDSU apartments, and the new rent amounts will take effect on June 1st. The contract renewal form for residents can be found online on the Residence Life website. On Wednesday, May 17th, NDSU Dining is hosting its 46th annual Scandinavian Buffet. The event runs two hours from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. and will be held in the ballroom of the Union. The lunch is held to recognize Sitten Damai, which is the Norwegian Independence Day. The buffet features traditional Scandinavian foods including Swedish meatballs, lutefisk, torsk, and lefse. Desserts including rice pudding, krumkaka, kranzakaka, and Danish butter cookies are also, will also be there. Tickets are $18 per person and can be purchased online or at the door. On Saturday, NDSU's graduation ceremony will take place. At 10 a.m., the College of Arts, Humanities, and Social Science, the College of Engineering, the College of Human Sciences and Education, and Interdisciplinary Studies will be celebrated. And at 2 p.m., the ceremony for graduates of the College of Agriculture, Food Systems, and Natural Resources, the College of Business, the College of Health Professions, and the College of Science and Mathematics will begin. 1,942 students will be graduating this semester. Out of these graduates, 93 will be employed or attend grad school directly after graduating. The majority of graduates major in engineering. Are you looking to capitalize on the unneeded goods from the university? Well, look no further. North Dakota State University is holding a surplus sale tomorrow with general bidding starting at 11. Some items include desktops for $30 and laptops for $40, and all computers were not included in operating system. Items up for auction include TVs, phones, tables, bookcases, and microwaves. The sale will take place at 3601 7th Avenue North. When we come back, we'll take a look at some local and national news. Don't go away. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. Become a big today. At NDSU, we're going to teach you about how to work with people. We're going to teach you about relationships with people and how to manage those relationships successfully, whether that's at work, whether that's at home. We have majors in agricultural communication, strategic communication, journalism, and management communication. We have students who have graduated who are doing all kinds of different things, everything from marketing to writing content to development to career coaching. We also, of course, have people doing more traditional things like a news reporter or working for TV stations. The faculty members in our department advise undergraduate students. We think that it's important for faculty to develop relationships with our undergrads. We have a advisory board, and that consists of people in the community who are like local business people, and we try to make connections with those people so that literally we know the person that they should talk to about a job. 
You can't be in the world if you can't communicate. My recommendation is that you take some communication classes at the very least if you can. Even better, do a major in communication. Mother's Day is this Sunday, May 14th. To celebrate, many businesses are hosting Mother's Day events around town. Some restaurants are offering Mother's Day brunch deals, and Zales at West Acres has specials of up to 50% off jewelry. If you're looking for a way to celebrate your moms, you're bound to find something around town. If you want to start your summer off on a high note, Fargo Climbing Company is hosting an intro to rock climbing class, which is beginner friendly with no experience being required. Admission is $12 and the class goes from 10 to 10.30 this Saturday, May 13th. The Red River Spring Market is taking place on Saturday in West Fargo at the POW MIA Plaza from 10 to 2 in the afternoon. More than 30 vendors will be in attendance with products including baked goods, art, decorations, and more. Live music from local bands and artists will also be taking place throughout the day. The market is free to attend and vendors accept SNAP benefits as well. While the Fargo Dome will be filled with graduates and their families this Saturday, next week will be a much different scene. The annual Fargo Marathon is taking place on May 20th and gives runners a chance to start and end the race inside of the Dome. In addition to being a Boston Marathon qualifier event, the race features over 50 live bands and DJs along the route to play for and cheer on the participants. A 10K and a half marathon race will also be taking place on Saturday, with a 5K, a kids race, a dog run, a and a cyclothon happening throughout the week. Zillennials have become the newest named micro-generation. This term has been coined to represent people who feel they don't fit into either Gen Z or Millennials, but fall somewhere between. Professor of Sociology and Director of the Center for Innovation and Social, Social Sciences at Boston University stated, Zillennials refer to a small cohort born between the early 1990s and early 2000s. They're on the cusp of Gen Z and Millennials. If you're in your mid to early 20s and have struggled to completely relate to either generation, you you can claim this micro-generation as your own. The Minnesota State Senate has overwhelmingly passed a bipartisan bill yesterday that aims to fight back against deepfakes generated by artificial intelligence. The bill would make it a gross misdemeanor to distribute AI-generated sexual images of someone without their consent. In addition, it would make it a misdemeanor to knowingly distribute altered videos of political candidates that can alter an election. The bill passed 64 to 1, with the lone opponent wanting greater penalties for misusing deepfake technologies. The bill still needs to be approved by the House and signed by the governor before it can become law. When we come back, we'll have sports with Malik Michel and weather with Dash Menzel. Stay tuned. One kid, one mentor, plus one moment can unlock limitless potential. One heart to heart. One inside joke. 30,000 youth are waiting. Be there for one of them. It's time. Become a big today. The NDSU Bookstore has everything you need to show off your bison pride. The bookstore can have you sporting green and gold wherever you go. It offers many different brands, sizes, styles, and selection so that you find exactly what you're looking for. Shop the NDSU Bookstore and show your spirit today. Founded in 1985, the Missouri Valley Football Conference has established a tradition of FCS football excellence. Competing at the highest level of NCAA Division I, student athletes at its 10 institutions demonstrate character, passion, and integrity as they grow as a student, an athlete, and a citizen. The Missouri Valley Football Conference, where leaders are shaped and champions are forged. There are so many great things to experience at NDSU. It's hard to pick one, but my favorite is... The people. They make it such a warm place. The bison aren't just across the country, they're across the globe. It's the perfect distance from home. The faculty are our biggest cheerleaders. Hands-on research experience. The affordable tuition. All the opportunities to stay active on campus. Real-world learning experiences. Once I got on campus, it felt like home.
With the Summer League Tournament coming up in a couple of weeks, Bison Baseball has been striving on the road to success. The Bison are coming off a road series sweep this past weekend against Northern Colorado, holding the Bears to a total of eight runs. On Friday, the Bison defeated the Bears 7-5, going into extra innings. The Bison took the lead in the third inning after junior Stephen Lund hit a home run. They struck back at the top of the fifth inning, scoring two runs off two RBI singles. The Bears responded with two runs in the fifth and in the seventh inning to take the lead 4-3. But in the eighth, the Bison stole the lead, scoring two runs before the Bears sent one home in the ninth, tying it up 5-5. Five five. In the end, the Bison came in clutch, scoring off a homer in an RBI triple. Junior Stephen Lund led the Bison with three hits, two RBIs, and two runs, and Jack Stow had one hit, two, run, two RBIs, and one run. On Saturday, the Bison cruised past the Bears, taking the victory 18-3 in seven innings. The Bison were up 3-0 after the second inning before the Bison racked up three runs in both the third and fourth inning. They came back in the fifth, de delivering the biggest blow yet, scoring six runs and shutting out the Bears for six straight innings. The Bison were up 18 to nothing at the top of the seventh. The Bears would, would finally put some points on the board at the bottom of the inning. However, it was not enough, and NSU took the win 18 to three. Junior Stephen Lund sparked the Bison with two hits, two RBIs, and four runs. Davis Hamilton had two hits, two RBIs, and one run, and Caden Schraubi had one hit, three RBIs, and two runs. The Bison capped off the series on Sunday, shutting out the Bears 10 to nothing in seven innings. Senior Peter Brookshaw put the Bison ahead after hitting a home run to left field. The Bison went on to score two runs in both the second and third inning and one run in the fourth to go up six to nothing. They came back scoring three runs in the sixth and run back and run run in the seventh to finish the game. Sierra Terrell Huggins, Huggins, sorry, the Bison uh, led the Bison with three hits, two RBIs, and run run. And Cadence Robby added with two hits, two RBIs, and one run. They are currently on an eight-game win streak. The Bison are 13 and five in the conference. They'll be back in action tomorrow, hosting Omaha. The first pitch is set for 6:30 p.m. at the Newman Outdoor Field. Now over to Bison softball. They had a challenging series going against number two Omaha Mavericks at the at home this past weekend. On Friday, the Bison lost both games of the doubleheader. In the first game, the Bison took a 1-0 lead in the fourth inning after freshman Zoe King hit an RBI single to score uh, senior Carly. Carly Gochius. Unfortunately, the Mavericks came back later, scoring three runs in the sixth and four runs in the seventh to win the game 7-1. In the second matchup, the Bison made it a close one, playing to 10 innings. However, they couldn't top the Mavericks. After a scoreless first inning, the Bison got on the board after senior Kaylee Moore had an RBI double, scoring Coley, Chloe Woodruff. Omaha replied at the top of the fourth with an RBI single before junior Angeli Aguilar Bocage hit a home run to take the lead 2-1. However, the Mavericks answered with a home run in the seventh and an RBI RBI single in the 10th to take the win 3-2. The Bison ended the series on Saturday with a 3-0 victory. The game was quiet until four inning, for the fourth inning. Zoe King blasted a two RBI single for the Bison to take the lead 2-0. Will just struck in the sixth inning with an RBI single and the, Bison, and the Bison held off the Mavericks for the rest of the way. Zoe King led the Bison with two hits and two RBIs. The Bison are currently playing at the Summer League Championship as the third seed. This morning, they beat sixth seed Kansas City 3-0 in the first round. For the second round, they lost against Omaha. However, the Bison will face STSU for the rights to continue in the tournament. And lastly, both track and field teams competed at the Bison tune-up at the brand new new uh, Terrence Dahl and Donna Beerus track complex last Friday. The men's put on a stellar performance, assembling 10 first place finishes. On the track, senior Jacob Levine ran a career best of 20.89 uh, seconds to win the 200 meter dash. He now ranks fourth in NDSU outdoor history and currently leads the summer league in this event. Sophomore Brock Jensen won the 110 meters hurdles in a season best time of 14.57 seconds and junior Dante White won the 100 meter dash in 10.72 seconds. On the field, senior Trevor Otterdahl won the hammer throw with a new personal best and facility record with a mark of 70.35 meters. He climbed to number 12 on the NCAA performance list. Otterdahl also threw 18.83 meters to win the shot put. Sophomore Caden Passion took first in the discus, throwing a season best of 54.28 meters. Senior Brandon Lewis won the long jump, leaping 7.10 meters. Junior Elijah Highland cleared 2.06 meters to win the high jump. Sophomore Caden Van Dusseldorp cleared an outdoor personal record of 5.03 meters to win the pole vault. And senior Benji and senior Benji Phillips took the javelin title with a throw of 68.36 meters. And for the women's, the NDSU shuttle hurdle relay took the win, clocking 55.04 meters. 
shattering the school's record, only UCF has ran a faster time at collegiate track and field this season. Teresa Bolingbrook won the 100 meter hurdles in a time of 13.69 seconds. Kendra Kelly won the 200 meter dash in her personal best of 23.49 seconds, which ranked second of all time at NDSU. She also took first in the 100 meter dash in 11.72 meters seconds. Nell Graham took first in the 400 meter hurdles with the time just over a minute. Freshman Kate LeBlanc claimed the 800 meter title in two minutes and 14 seconds, the second fastest time of her career. And finally, Alyssa Melvin leads 12.38 meters to win the triple jump. Both teams are currently hosting the Summer League Championship, Outdoor Championships. Good luck to both teams. Well, that's all I have for you by the Sports Report. Now over to Dash Mensel for the weather. Dash, the weather has been perfect outside lately. I thought it would never come to Fargo. Well, it finally has. And unfortunately, though, that good weather not going to last throughout this weekend, though, as we do have some wet weather coming this weekend. Now, as for our current conditions right now, it is actually partly cloudy outside with 81 degree temperatures right now. It is muggy outside. Dew point, unfortunately, we have an error on that right now, but the winds are coming out of the east at six miles per hour. And as we look at the hour by hour forecast, clouds are going to continue to come in overnight as we head into tomorrow morning when rain will show up tomorrow. But as for the temperatures, they'll cool down significantly overnight and get to 60 degrees by tomorrow morning. And as for the skycast right now, sunset or uh, sunrise was at 557 this morning and sunset will be at 850 tonight, which gives us almost 15 hours of sunlight and meanwhile as we look at the moon phases right now tomorrow night will be the third quarter phase of the moon meanwhile as we look at the almanac today's high was projected to be 79 degrees obviously we have gotten over that and low is 52 degrees average temperature is a high of 67 and a low of 42 so we are definitely 10 to 15 degrees above that average right now and as for the record temps though it's nothing near the high of 93 degrees that we had back in 1906 and the low of 19 back in 1946 Meanwhile, as we look at temperatures across the country, pretty warm across the entire uh, country on the east coast or on the eastern side of the country. But as we head into the Rocky Mountains right now, a little bit cooler as we got a system coming in through there, which will also bring us some pre precipitation over the weekend. And as for that precipitation for the next 48 hours, definitely going to be hitting the Dakotas and Nebraska pretty hard, as well as another system coming out the Gulf of Mexico that will be giving a lot of precipitation to Texas as well. As for the seven day forecast right now, uh, a lot of storms coming in tomorrow. Not a lot of storms, probably scattered storms tomorrow, 73 degrees for the high. And then it's going to cool down this weekend for graduation day on Saturday. It'll be uh, scattered showers. And and then Sunday for Mother's Day, a beautiful day, 69 degrees and perfectly sunny. And as for the rest of the week, 75 degrees on Monday with more sun as well on Tuesday and Wednesday. Also a lot of sun on those days, 78 and 76 degrees respectively. But then there seems to be another system that's coming in later next week that will be cooling down the entire country, it seems like, as Fargo will be seeing 66 degree temperatures and scattered showers next Thursday. Well, that is all for the forecast this week. If you have any photos that you want to submit, you can send them to www.ndsubin.com slash news. Well, that is all for the forecast. Back to you at the desk, Malik. You guys couldn't get good weather on your graduation day on Saturday. Yeah, it's kind of a bummer. You know, you got to take those photos outside. You got to yeah. get like, you wanted to take photos out by the bison statue. Unfortunately, that might not happen now. Yep, you'll get some drizzles on you. Well, that's all I have for this evening's newscast for the Bison Information Network. I'm Malik Mitchell. Thank you for joining us and have a great night.